Welcome to the Ministry of Silly Charts 2020. I'm here again with my co-creator, and this year we have four categories. All computer games, artwork charts, round charts, and the Load Script Champions League. And we have contributions from the Click community this year. Just to mention, all those charts were made with ClickSense standard or charts available in the ClickSense extension bundle. And right in time, Click added the animator in September 2020, which is an object that gives really a lot of extra fun here. So let's get started. The first category is the two pewed to all computer games, which my dad used to play when he was young. Mm -hmm. On third place, we have the Pac-Man chart. It is a very simple chart. It doesn't even need data to be loaded from the load script. It can be done with the value loop formula alone. It uses a second measure that drives the diameter. So we get a large yellow pie segment for the hungry Pac-Man and a small dot that the Pac-Man eats. And what is the play button for? Ha, I almost forgot the play button. It makes a little variation in the degrees of the Pac-Man. So it opens and closes its mouth. Rank number two is the Minecraft chart. The Minecraft chart is a bar chart with eight bars and eight segments of each bar. And I'm loading in the load script a distinctive color for each of these segments. And when they pile up as a bar chart, it makes a low res phase, eight times eight is the resolution. And here you can toggle between a pig face and a girl's face. And top rank in this category is the Tetris chart. The Tetris chart. Now you have to play the animation here. And then you see the Tetris stones fall from the sky. And usually they would pile up from the bottom for those who know this game, but this was really too complex here. But similar to the Minecraft chart, it also used a stacked bar chart. This time with a gray segment from the bottom which frame after frame gets smaller until the block lands on the floor. Do you know any of these games, Eva, by chance? Minecraft! Oh, Minecraft! Okay, this is still around though. The second category is about artwork. Artwork, and we have very rarely used chart type here. On third place, it was made with a funnel chart. And really, I think the funnel chart should be called fun chart because I don't think you can do any serious visualizations with it. What have you got here, Eva? I know this building. It's the Empire State Building. In New York, exactly. We've been there together. Uh, 2015, you remember? Yes. <laughs> so in order to paint the Empire State graph, I had to add a load script. And for each floor from the bottom to the top, I specified the width. I decreased the width according to the building's shape and the final chart by itself will pile those floors on top of each other. And then I only had to give alternate colors for the different stores. The next chart is the country lane chart. I got inspired for this when Click introduced the dash line for line charts. So I thought I can make now this nice sunset scene and these are all different lines on an x-axis and the sun is just a single dot on this x-axis. It's done with a few lines of script. And the winner of artwork category is the London Bridge chart. And I was there too. Correct. We traveled a lot as a family, right? So this chart was made of several curves going from left to right. So I thought like, let's paint not only, you know, Corona curves, this could be a suspension cable of the London Bridge. And the good thing is at the end, it goes down exponentially again. So this is like a mirrored version of lines. It gives a left and a right bottom, a left and a right tower, and eventually also the suspension cables. So, just to mention, there is no real vertical line. So there is the trick here 
that I have added a very, very, very tiny offset on the x-axis, which when it's rendered, it looks like they are exactly vertical on each other, but it's not. What is the open bridge slider down there? Ha! Huh. I almost forgot about it, but try it out. I duplicated all the data rows that I loaded in the script, and the only thing I changed was that very point where the two collapsible parts meet. And as you move the slider, you will open and close the bridge, like it does in London when the big ships pass by. We are now in the round chart category. Typically, charts are vertical or horizontal, and they have axes. But in this category, we really wanted to make things round only. Here we have the Earth and Sun at the center. And with the animation button, the Earth starts to rotate around the Sun, like, like it does during the year. So in order to plot this, I used the scatter plot, but I had to use the load script also to create the coordinates for the Earth. The Sun always stays at the same position in the very center, whereas the Earth goes around the Sun using sinus and cosinus to plot X and Ys. And that's fairly easy, isn't it? Next, we make use of the radar chart from the extension bundle. This is a spider web, and you can change the number of spokes. It doesn't need any data from the script. It's generated with value loop formula, so you can paint this in any app when you are bored. But how does the spider get there? Ah, yes, that was one thing I forgot. The spider comes from the support of CSS that I introduced with the help of the multi-KPI object. There's another video of mine where I'm showing this, so this is a little bit of cheating, but oh. yeah, it works pretty well. <laughs> and the winner of the round category is the Kranz chart. Kranz is the German word for a breath. It has a static number of radials every 15 degrees and it plots four lines over a sine wave. I created the sine wave in the script, but the sliders here manipulate the wavelength. So it always gives a sort of symmetric, nice round figure. Let me play a bit with the sliders. Yeah, I mean, this looks like a flower and if you, if you increase the left one, it looks more like a sun. Oh, oh, this is my favorite one. Nice. The last category is the Scripting Champions League. The second place goes to Mandelbrot chart. That, what is a Mandelbrot? Benoit Mandelbrot was a Polish-born French and American mathematician and he was pioneer of fractal geometry visualizations. When I started to code in 1983 in BASIC, this code was printed in computer magazines and you had to code it into your Commodore 64 by hand. And this set is based on a set of complex numbers, C, for the function shown here, uh, basically set square plus C, and treating the real and imaginary part of C as image coordinates, this gives this picture. So the colors of the pixel are defined by counting after how many iterations the sequence reaches a certain threshold. Such iterations are done in the load script, so it's that for that reason it's in the Champions League. But not only because of that. Even then I had an issue with the standard GU object or scatter plot to show that many points. It became very slow to show tens of thousands of plots. So I decided to use the aggregation function geoaggregeometry, which combines neighboring plots of the same color into a larger shape. So that way, it shows the mandel plot in a very performant way as a pseudo geo shape. You can use the gestures like in any map object to move around or to use below cursor buttons just as a little extra gadget. That looks really nice and abstract. But let's look at the, the winner of this category. The winner comes from Tel Aviv. Yes, it is Eyal Shoham from Big Bridge who made the winning chart. Eyal 
is in the scripting Champions League and he used Python to turn an image of me into a text file describing the colors for X and Y pixels. And while I did the same for an 8x8 image in the Minecraft chart earlier, he managed to show a 265 times 265 pixel image with the standard scatter plot. How did you do that, Eyal? Let's call him. Hey, Eyal. Hey, Christo. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm fine, Eyal. You know what? You won the Click Scripting Champions League in the Ministry of City Charts competition this year. Yeah. Tell me one thing. How could you make this using the schedule plot, which has a limit of showing not more than 1,000 points? Ah, oh, okay. So the process starts actually with uh, taking uh, an original, whatever image you would like to present. Uh, I use the Python script to take the metadata of that image. So for each pixel of the image, I um, save the value of the grayscale. So we get one value of the color. Um, then I take the CSV and I loop through uh, each point and I create as many points as that uh, value. And when click scatter plot, uh, tries to draw so many points, it creates a density KPI of how many points I have in each section of the scatter plot. When you zoom in, you can see the data points, but until you have uh, uh, less than 1,000 data points, you will get the density chart uh, KPI. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's not very resource friendly, <laughs> I broke the server a couple of times. Uh, so... Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> My phone. That's good to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, if you stay with us for the next uh, minutes, I'll tell you what the prize is in just a bit. There's a prize. Yes. What is the prize for EL? Well, EL wins a pair of Click socks. Well, well done, done Eo. This concludes our 2020 Ministry of Silly Charts. I hope you had a lot of fun and laughter with this video and please share it with your peers. And if you have a funny chart for me for the next year's competition, please send it to me. Maybe you will be the winner of the next pair of click socks. See you. Bye bye. bye. in this category is the Minecraft chart. No, ah. <laughs> and top rank in this category is is the thirty no. <laughs> the the dirty chart. <laughs> okay. Papa. Schickst du dann wirklich die Socken?